Happy last full week of class, everybody. We have one more reaction thing I want to make sure that I have paid attention to, and then we are going to play a game with our reactions. So the point of this video is for us to focus on the role of inerts. So what do I mean by inerts? Well, let's take a, a good common example and hone it on it. Uh, here I've got the combustion of methane. And in this case, I want you to imagine the combustion of methane in the case where someone is uh, either like using natural gas in their stove or we're using it to power a Bunsen burner, something like that. Some place where you've seen um, methane get burned. Wow, that was a horrible grammatic construction. Anyway, we can burn, you know that we can burn methane. And if uh, you've been around a natural gas stove, either at home or at a restaurant someplace, uh, or you've seen a Bunsen burner in the lab, you'll notice that we do not have a oxygen canister that is powering this. No, that's not a thing. We use the free and plentiful air that's all around. Uh, and so air has oxygen in it. Uh, we know that because we haven't asphyxiated yet, so that's good. Uh, but as you also know, air tends to be about 79% nitrogen and about 21% oxygen. And that's even, that's like fudging, fudging. I'm going to put little fudge symbols in front of these uh, because there's other stuff like argon, carbon dioxide, and even smaller trace elements in air. But these are the two biggest components that we have to worry about. So we're just going to look at those. And in fact, I'm going to make another uh, fudge factor assumption here just to make the math of what we're about to do a little bit easier. We're going to pretend nitrogen's at 80% and oxygen's at 20. Okay, and that is uh, again just for convenience. So, what does this mean? Well, uh, our reaction that we care about right here uh, is shown, and let's say we have a mole of methane to begin with. And uh, let's go ahead and take five moles, not of oxygen, but of air. Uh, and then let's assume we didn't have any carbon dioxide or water floating around. So five moles of air. What are we going to do with this? Well, that means when we write out our initial ends, so here we go, N0. Uh, so we have CH4. We have O2, we have CO2, we have water, right, as we like to write this out. So we're going to start with one mole of this. And actually, I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I left off N2. Can't leave off N2. So if we have one mole of uh, CH4, then we have five moles of air. And if air is 20% uh, oxygen and we have five moles of it, that means we start with one mole of oxygen. Uh, we don't have any CO2, we don't have any H2O, and uh, what's the other four moles? Well, that's going to be nitrogen. And so then we have, as the reaction proceeds, 1 minus C, 1 minus 2 C, C, 2 C, and then, uh, duh, what do I write for nitrogen, right? Like, what goes in this box? Hit pause and think about that for a second. Did you do it? Okay, I'm going to assume you did it. I'm going to just write it down. Um, there's no C in it, right? Because the reaction has no nitrogen showing up in the reaction. Therefore, there is no influence of the nitrogen on the reaction part of the reaction. Uh, so there's no C. So it was four at the beginning. It's got to be four at the end. So it's still there. Uh, and so if we want to write down and total, and sum everything up, we have two plus or minus, let's see, we have three on the left and we have three on the right, so it's nothing. C has no impact. Uh, so there's two moles of our reactants, and then we had four of the inerts. So our total moles is always going to be equal to six, right? Double check my math on this. But I think our total mole in this case is always equal to six because we've got three on the left, three on the right, and then four um, not participating at all. So six moles all the time, which is convenient for us doing math. 
So what I want you to do, and this is, you, you're not going to have to turn this in, but I want you to, to practice this and be aware because you're going to do this other places in life. Um, what if you write out your mole fractions? And why are you going to write out your mole fractions? Well, you're going to write out your mole fractions in anticipation of uh, solving Ka equals some really huge number, and then on the other side, pi yi to the new i, right? And those y's are going to have the c embedded in them. So if I was going to write my expression for methane, uh, it's 1 minus c divided by total number of moles. So in the past, our total number of moles would have been just um, to do with our reactants and our products. But in this case, because there is an inert there, uh, the inert shows up in the denominator all the time. So our total number of moles, we just worked it out, is 6. No C happens to be in it for this reaction. Uh, and if you compare that to kind of what we did last time you solved this kind of problem, um, we would have had 1 minus C divided by just the moles that we had um, total in the reactor that were participating in the reaction. And so uh, then in that case, it would have just been the um, two, but now it's six, which means everything's much more dilute. And is that good for the reaction or bad for the reaction? I leave that up to your brain. Um, I'll give you a hint. It's gonna be Professor Prince's favorite answer. So I want you to go through and write out the rest of the y's. Y-O-2, oh, we already got the one, Y-C-O-2, Y-H-2-O, Y-N-2. And then you recognize Y-N-2 would not show up up here, but its influence is still felt because the denominator of all these mole fractions is much bigger because you've got this nitrogen floating around. So go through, make sure you know how to write that all out. Um, feel good about that. Recognize that it doesn't really change the equations you'd be solving, uh, but it does change the answer you get, because as we said already, it changed the denominator. And so that's gonna impact everything.